During quarter four in 2020, Amazon reportedly made over $125.6 billion in revenue. This means that they made just under $1 million per minute during that time period. And according to Statista.com, of that $125.6 billion made by Amazon, 55% of those sales came from third-party sellers on the platform. Needless to say, year after year, quarter four presents an incredible opportunity for Amazon sellers on the platform, if you know what you're doing. I know I've learned something new every quarter four that I've been in, and I've made some big mistakes that really cost me a lot of revenue that I could have made if I knew how to navigate my way through some of these problems. So in this video, I wanna share some of those mistakes with you so you don't make them and so you guys can make some more money during this quarter four. And make sure to stay until the end because the last mistake that I tell you is the one that cost me the most amount of money. So let's get into the video. Hey, what's going on guys? Marvin here, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and press the like button if you do find this video helpful. With that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So mistake number one was not sending in my inventory soon enough. We all know that Amazon lets us know when we should have our inventory into the Amazon warehouse if we wanna have our products available for sale on key selling dates, such as Cyber Monday, Black Friday, and Christmas. This year, if you want your products to be available for sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, then you need to have your inventory in by November 15th. And if you want your products to be available for Christmas, then you need to make sure your inventory is in the Amazon warehouse by November 2nd. But in my first quarter four, I was kind of a loose cannon sending inventory in. I was sending an inventory left and right way past these dates that Amazon has set for all of the Amazon sellers. Now, this isn't a bad thing at face value because you should be sending an inventory whenever you can. The problem was that I was sending an inventory a week or two weeks before Christmas and still expecting them to sell before the year ended. What I should have done was send in more inventory early in Q4 to really capitalize on the customer volume during this peak season. Instead, sporadically sending inventory in all the way up to the last minute led to lost shipments, longer processing times, and some of my inventory not selling out until January, February, or even March, which was selling at a much lower price than I expected it to. So just make sure that you send in your inventory early and you send in enough inventory so you're not scrambling at the end like I was. Now, mistake number two was sending too much of the wrong product. Everyone knows that during Q4, the amount of sales a particular listing will experience is going to be significantly higher depending on the product. Could be 2X, could be 3X, depending on the product, but this does not mean to get reckless. Even though we may get caught up in the excitement of Q4 and an increased amount of sales that our business is going to experience, we can't forget our fundamentals of product research. Because the mistake that I was making was assuming that every single product across the board, across the entire platform, was going to see some sort of increase in sales during Q4. But a hard lesson that I learned was that if a product isn't selling all year, it's not going to sell during quarter four. So it's important to remember that as Amazon sellers, we rely on data, not miracles, okay? So if a product isn't selling whatsoever and you're doing your product research and it might have sold maybe a unit or two over a long time, it's not magically going to be selling 100 units no matter how badly you want it to sell at that price point or at that velocity because you're getting it at a great price from your supplier. If it doesn't sell year round, it's not going to sell during quarter four, assuming it's not a seasonal product. And a good rule of thumb when sending an inventory that does sell is about 1.5X or 2X your normal inventory, but this is highly dependent on the individual product. Some products see a massive increase, some see a slight increase, some don't see any increase. Now, mistake number three was not having a repricer during that first Q4 that I went through and just relying manually on pricing each individual product. One thing you're gonna realize with quarter four is that things are gonna get very competitive very quickly. So if you're trying to manually price all of your own products, depending on how many you have, you're gonna be at a huge disadvantage. If you have a handful of products, you might be able to get away with manually pricing them, but you're gonna be checking on it all the time. For me, I had quite a bit of units, too many units to handle during this first quarter four that I went through, and I was just trying to manually go through every single one of them, constantly trying to keep up with the price, which is essentially like trying to win a race, except Except your competition all has cars and you're showing up with a horse. You're still going to be moving, but not as fast or as efficiently or as effortlessly 
as your competition. So find a good repricer that you like and make sure to sign up for it and start kind of playing around with things, especially since we are in quarter four already. But before we get into the real peak season, make sure you know how to use it. The last thing you wanna do is manually be pricing your products because you're going to be at a huge disadvantage and you're gonna leave a lot of money on the table. So mistake number four was probably the biggest mistake as far as lost opportunity. The amount of money I could have potentially made um, if I didn't make this mistake. So this is an important one. One thing you're gonna notice going through quarter four, especially if it's your first quarter four, is that a lot of people on the listing that you're on are going to stock out, which means they're going to run out of stock and the amount of sellers on the listing is going to be significantly less. And usually on Amazon, if the amount of sellers is low, the price will be higher and more consistent. If the amount of sellers is high, then the price will start going downwards and be very erratic because as soon as somebody sells out who's dragging the price down, it's gonna shoot back up, then shoot back down, but that's generally the rule of thumb. Less sellers, higher selling price. More sellers, lower selling price. But you're gonna start seeing these competitors stock out some right away, some a little bit more towards the middle time of quarter four, and some are gonna sell out really deep into the Q4 season all the way up to Christmas and the new year, which presents a great opportunity for you to sell your product at a higher price if you just hold onto it for a little bit longer. If you don't have any plans on replenishing that product and it's kind of a one-time thing that you're gonna have access to this inventory, then I would highly encourage you to just hold onto it a little bit longer until you get a little bit deeper into Q4 and sell it for a higher price. With that being said, just make sure that you use some common sense here with your pricing on Amazon. You don't wanna go from selling a product that sells for $10 and then you're the last person on the listing and you try to sell it for $100 at a 10X markup. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am saying is that let's say a product is selling for roughly $30 and by the end of Q4, once everybody has stocked out or the majority of sellers have stocked out, the last few remaining sellers will sell that product for let's say 50 or $60 because it's kind of going back to the manufacturer's suggested retail price. But we're not going to some outlandish price points here. We're just increasing our profits strategically by holding onto that inventory a little bit longer. But again, use some common sense here. All right, so I wanna show you guys a quick example of exactly what I'm talking about. So on this product, we can see that going into Q4, just before Q4, the product was selling for roughly $27, just under $27. As we enter Q4, you can see the price is already increasing to $30, okay? Now we're getting closer um, to about the peak time of the of the quarter four, which is um, right before Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Now the product is selling for 32. Then we really start seeing people stock out because you can see all, as, as the price is increasing, you can see the amount of sellers is going down. So as we start getting into the peak time, uh, more and more sellers are selling out at a much faster rate. So what we started at was $27 at the beginning of Q4. We end the Q4 season at a selling price of $50. So you're gonna end up making way more money, but it does depend specifically on that product. So this specific product that I showed you a few months prior, it was selling at that $50 price point. But going into Q4 and everybody started to ramp up their sales, especially with a lot of new sellers, they quickly dragged the price down. And if you can spot that, you know that that price is gonna come right back up. So essentially all it did was create a U-shape going from the $50 price point down to the $27 price point and straight Straight back up to the $50 price point deep into the quarter four season. So the people that were able to hold made significantly more profit. Now again, this isn't gonna work on every single product and you really wanna be smart with how you price things. Because keep in mind, according to Amazon's fair pricing policy, they define pricing practices that harm customer trust as follows. Setting a price on a product or service that is significantly higher than recent prices offered on or off Amazon. So just make sure you keep Amazon's pricing policy in mind when you are trying to implement this strategy. But this has happened every single year. You're gonna see people stock out and the price is going to soar for so many different listings. Now I've shared some of my quarter four mistakes, but I wanna hear from some of you guys out there who have been selling on the platform for some time now. We have a lot of beginners here on this channel. And if you guys have some mistakes that these beginners can learn from, then I highly encourage you guys to leave them down below in the comment section of this video. If you guys wanna be helpful to all of the newbies here, that are starting their Amazon wholesale business. And if you guys are brand new to Amazon and you wanna learn how to start your Amazon wholesale business completely for free, step by step, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you watch the video that's gonna pop up on screen right now. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.